Hello. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate panel regression in R using the PLM package. This demo is based on examples from the STATA 13 manual, which you can access by going to this link right here. And a description of the examples and the um, outputs are provided on these pages within the manual. So if you want to follow along or compare the results from our analyses from this uh, demonstration with those in the STATA manual, you can go to these pages within the uh, STATA 13 manual. So first off, let me also note that uh, this particular text file that I have open is going to be available for download underneath the video and it's going to contain everything that I cover in the video as well as a few uh, other things as well so be sure to check it out and uh, also note that uh, in starting up what you'll want to do first is to install the package PLM if you haven't already done so so you'll want to use the install packages function to do that um, if you want to follow along with the, the, the examples that I'm providing in this video, you also probably want a copy of the data. So I have the data uh, in a CSV file that you can download by going to this link right here. So that's uh, to my Google Drive. Um, down here, you'll also see that I'm using the read CSV function in order to read the CSV file data into a data object, basically a data frame that's called NLS2. So I've already actually been working with the uh, data um, in R so for this particular demonstration and preparing for it. So it's already active and ready to go. So let's just go ahead though and um, take a look at the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into R right here and essentially I'm going to start off just by looking at the structure of the data first. So we'll uh, use the structure function and we'll say NLS2 right here and so these are all of the variables that are included. Uh, three of these variables, the last three that you see right here were actually created and added to the data set from the original uh, data from the STATA uh, examples. So these are just the square of uh, three of the earlier variables that you see up above. Now let's also take just a quick look at, at uh, the data using the head function. So I'm going to say head and then NLS2 right here. And so now you can see that we get the first six rows of data and the different variables that are included. And I want to draw your attention to the ID code variable and the year variable. And both of these in our analyses are going to be treated as index variables. So ID code is representing the subject and year is representing time. So now let's move into running a fixed effects model. And uh, before you do anything, though, you need to make sure that you've called up the PLM package. So if you haven't already done so, you're going to need to use the library function to do that. So I'll just show you really quickly how to do that. I'm just going to type in library PLM and enter. So once you've installed the package, it should be ready to go. All you need to do is call up uh, the package using the library function. And now you can run your panel regressions. So the first example is a fixed effects model and in this case we have the PLM function associated with the PLM package. And the layout of the regression model, uh, which is all of this right here, uh, is pretty much the same layout uh, as if you were running a least squares regression using the LM function in R. So, and what I mean by that is, is that you have essentially the dependent variable uh, to the left of the tilde sign, which is this right here, and you have all of the predictors laid out on the right separated by plus signs. So we're using the PLM function and this is the basic model that we're running. You'll notice that we have a comma then on the uh, right here we've got uh, the data argument equals and then NLS2. So that's the data frame that we're referencing. Then we have model equals and inside quotation marks within. So when you're running a fixed effects model you're going to be using the within uh, statement um, when, we're, when referencing the type of model. You also see that we have the index argument and this is in order to uh, indicate uh, which variables in our data frame are the index variables. So we have index equals C and inside the parenthesis we have ID code uh, which is in quotation marks, comma, and then uh, year uh, found within the quotation marks. You also see that I have 
an FE right here. This is just a name of a data object which is going to contain the results from my analysis. So we have FE and we have the little arrow which is just less than sign and a hyphen and then everything else to the right is the specification of the model and um, and all the other details that I've just covered. So I'm not going to type all this directly in. It's, it's actually a lot faster just to copy this from my uh, text file and paste it into R. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in and hit enter. And so now let's take a look at the results. So I'm going to type in summary and inside the parenthesis I'm going to type in FE. So that's the object containing the results. I'm going to hit enter and there you go. So now you can see we have up here we've got everything that we typed in just a couple of minutes ago. Now, down below we've got the uh, regression coefficients. So we have all of our predictors, the estimates, standard errors, t-values, and p-values from our model. And we have the within r-square value and then down below here we've got our f-test to evaluate the overall model fit. So just keep in mind that when we're running the fixed effects model, our predictors were all time varying predictors. Um, now let's also run a random effects model, but we're going to add in some time invariant predictors in addition to those variables that we had in our fixed effects model that were time varying. So we're going to now create a new data object called I'm just calling it RE and we still have the basic same layout that we had uh, above up to about this point. You'll notice that now these two variables are added into the model and these are essentially time invariant predictors. So we have grade and race as our time invariant predictors. Pretty much everything, everything else in our layout is the same except that now following the model argument we have equals and in quotation marks we have random. So this is to specify that we're going to be running a random effects model. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of this, copy it and paste it in to R and hit enter and we'll just use the summary function in order to look at it a little bit more closely. So hit enter and so now you can see that we have our um, our basic model again. Uh, again, the wage variable right here, this is the dependent variable. These are all of our uh, predictor variables. These are all the time uh, time varying predictors. These, uh, excuse me, all the way through south. And then these are the time invariant predictors. Again, we're re referencing the data frame containing the data. We specified model as, model as random. And then we are identifying our index variables. So scrolling down, you can see that again, we have our coefficients. All of these uh, predictors all the way down to here, these are the time varying predictors. These are the time invariant predictors that we have right here. And you can see that we have our R squared value and a chi squared test in order to evaluate the overall model fit. So that pretty much uh, summarizes um, a couple of basic models that you could run uh, using the PLM package. And if you want more information on the PLM package, uh, the manual, you can go to this uh, link right here and download a copy of it. There's also a nice tutorial on it. I'm giving you really very bare bones description of it and some of the functions that are available. But uh, these two sites are uh, contain a lot of useful information. Once again, if you want to um, download this particular text file, be sure to click underneath the video uh, description and it will be available to you. So I appreciate you watching and um, hope you found this useful.